Judging by the sounds coming from their bedroom, I assumed that Dad had returned home early. He was on a business trip in Columbus, and we didn't expect him for another couple of days. I grabbed a bowl, filled most of it with cereal, and sat down at the kitchen table, watching a video on my headphones. I didn't really want to hear what was happening up there. I'm not sure if it was some kind of movement that I still caught, or intuition that made me look. The man coming down the stairs was not Dad. Who the hell are you? Startled, he stopped halfway down the stairs. I, uh, your mom said you were at a friend's. Who are you? I am your mother's friend. I sat and watched him go down the rest of the stairs. As he walked by, he grabbed a granola bar from the table. Listen, kid, let's not make this bigger than it really is. Things happen. You'll understand when you get older. He seemed to be about 40. Put the bar down. I almost didn't recognize my own voice. Put it down, or I... He dropped it. Of course, baby. Doesn't matter. If I ever see you again, I will send you to the hospital. The man stopped and looked at me. Seriously, I understand. But don't go crazy. Your father's honor and all that, of course. Good job, kid, but don't try to bite off more than you can chew. Grow up a little before you threaten adults. You know... You sit at a desk all day? The biggest exercise you do is go to the vending machine for a candy bar? For a second I thought about throwing cereal at him. Reality check. You are old, you are slow, and you have no stamina. I'm 16, so maybe you're stronger than me, but that's all. Show up here again, and I'll leave you in a bloody heap on the front lawn. He grinned. Okay, cool guy. Duly taken into account. When he left, I wanted to go upstairs and talk to my mother. Instead, I tried to calm down and collect myself. Most likely, she will come down soon. The rest of the cereal went down the toilet. I couldn't eat anything, and my stomach was turning to acid. I returned to the kitchen. I have made the necessary preparations. I was waiting. Like her lover, she stopped in shock halfway down the stairs. Edward, you were supposed to be with the Denzings. Yes. His grandmother had to be rushed to the hospital. They dropped me off along the road. So, so, did you just get here? No. Saw your fuck buddy. How long have you been cheating on your dad? She paused before answering. It's none of your business. Everything about this grown-up stuff is between me and your father. He knows. And again there was a pause. Not certainly in that way. Your father is often away. I need. We have problems. Communication problems. We'll keep this between us. You have to be kidding me. Do you think I won't tell him? No, Edward, you won't tell him. You will not hurt your father unnecessarily. Second, think about what might happen. He will never believe you. Third, if he believes you, what next? Divorce? Now you hardly see him. Then you will never see him at all. I will take care of that. Well, what if he gets custody? Then I may never see you. No, I will tell the judge that he mocked me, that I fear for your safety. He never touched you. She shook her head and looked at me sadly, as if I was a moron. Yes, but the judge doesn't know that. A third voice entered the conversation. Well, now he will know it. Edward, you can hang up. I'll call you later. I'm leaving and will be home by seven. I took the phone off my knee and put it on the table. All this is recorded. You might want to pack some things, Mom. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.